Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you day three of building and painting an extremely rare Empire land ship for the old world. This is meant to be my final day getting this entire thing done. It was a three day project to get this beautiful miniature, which I've had for so many years now, finished up completely 100% crew glued on, base done, flocked the whole shabam, ready to be put on a tabletop and used with some rule set from the old world of steam tank or whatever. So obviously you guys have been following along with the first two days of thing. Those videos have done very well. I guess you guys are excited to see how the land ship turned out. And hopefully by the end of today's video, I will be able to deliver that to you. Before I get into it, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. You guys have been absolutely incredible. The support the last few months has been incredible. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you want to get involved with that, there are links in the description below. Access to a private Discord server and an extra video every single week just for you guys are just two of the awesome benefits. And it really is the easiest and best way to support the channel moving forward. And secondly, I am going to be attending an event in the uh, Underworld Gaming Store here in Dublin on the 10th of February for the Old World. It is the first Old World event being held in Ireland. I'm very excited to be going. It's a thousand point kind of campaign day style thing. It's kind of formatted like a tournament, but it's not as serious or stressful as a tournament. It's basically a group of people getting together, try the Old World for the first time, learn the rules, and have some fun. They've since extended it to have an extra four tickets available. So if there's anybody in the Greater Dublin area or Ireland who's willing to travel and wants to participate in that day, like I said, 10th of February, all the details are on the Underworld Gaming website. I will link that down in the description below. You guys can check it out and you can come along, and perhaps get to play a game against myself and my fully painted Bretonians. They'll be fully painted for that day, I swear. Okay, guys, without further ado, let's get finishing this land ship. Okay guys, we are here at day three of the land ship build. This is meant to be the final day. And obviously I've waffled on about me building and painting this thing for the last two videos. So I thought I would start off a little bit different with this video and give you a little monologue about the history of the uh, Marienburg land ship, the city state of Marienburg and some of its history as well, taken from of course the Warhammer wiki pages. So the land ship, formerly the Marienburg class land battleship, is a massive, bulky contraption built in poor imitation of the Imperial steam tank for the merchant princes of the city-state of Marienburg. It is covered in decorative work, armor plating, and a whole host of other things not entirely germane to its continued function. It is more akin to a lumbering mobile gun platform than a fast armored assault vehicle. Now, why was this thing made? Okay, let's figure out why it was made. So. One of the wealthiest cities in the old world, a nexus for trade and crossroads for many lands, such as Marienburg's wealth, that in the year 2429, it effectively bought its succession from independence from the empire by a vast transfer of gold into the imperial coffers. Its merchant lords having grown tired of the fractious wars and intrigues of the imperial state and their effect on the only thing that they cared for, the pursuit of profit. This independence, hard schemed for and defended many times both against outside forces and from within as well as those in the empire who would see it undone has been the making of Marienburg's power which stands greater than it ever has but has also proved in some circumstances to be a two-edged sword particularly in military terms. Without the vast manpower and veteran men-at-arms the empire can call upon Marienburg has often been forced to buy its way out of trouble and its merchant guilds have long learned to rely upon mercenary forces and even privateers to supplement their own small standing armies and retainers. When the need has arisen, which has been often in particular, allied troops from the empire, its former home nation and largest trading partner have sometimes provided thin on the ground in recent years when a great threat has come to endear Marienburg and the empire both, in particular elite imperial units, have proved an exorbitant expense to hire, leaving the security of Marienburg vulnerable. A case in point has been the incredibly powerful and extremely rare Imperial steam tank, examples of which have been loaned in the past at backbreaking cost under close Imperial supervision, of course, and had proved unavailable to be purchased outright at any cost. 
The genius behind the steam tank is all but unreplicable at any rate, and such secrets as those known by the Imperial engineers are guarded upon pain of death. So in recent years, with ever-increasing threats to their city-state growing all around them, the guild masters of Marienburg sought to do what they had always done and spend their way out of the problem. As they could not buy a steam tank, they would commission something better. Wary of the political ramifications, the Imperial School of Engineers in Altorf would have nothing to do with this contract, while the dwarves merely scorn such human folly. In a cabal of engineers at the Imperial Gunners Guild Nuln, however, the proposition and the vast sums of money offered provided irresistible and with the, now apologies if I butcher this name, Countess Emmanuel von Liebwitz tactic approval and no doubt reasons for her own beyond a cut of the price the mass of the imperial gunnery school entered into a secret bargain with marienburg to build them steam tanks of their own there was one problem with this they didn't know how to there were countless disasters at the prototype stage and the whole project became known as the coffin filler by the young apprentices engineers attached to it in dread Steam boilers such as they could construct couldn't be made small enough to retain the necessary power without becoming dangerously unstable. Hull mounted ordnance provided just as likely to smash the machine to pieces when fired and the whole thing had a tendency to fall apart when the smallest change in direction was attempted. Justly are the forges of the Imperial Gunnery School famed for craftsmanship and productivity but not for innovation. And with every delay and cost overrun, the engineers found themselves agreeing to more and more concessions from the hard bargaining Marienburgs in turn. Yes, it would be able to navigate the wetlands of the cursed marshes. Yes, it could be crewed by Marienburg troops rather than dedicated engineers. While the cost kept spiraling and still no working war machine in sight, as the delay turned into years, the merchant lords of Marienburg began to suspect that they'd been had and their monies had disappeared as if tossed down a privy and dark rumblings of a vengeful tribe war were an offering with none could little afford. It was then that one of the most unstable of gunnery school engineers, a man named, and I apologies again, Hezekai Gutman, known less than affectionately as the burnt scarecrow to his fellows, had an epiphany. If they could not construct a small powerful boiler such as the steam tank had, why bother? Why not use a large, cruder one instead, and the machine could be scaled up accordingly? And conversely, the cannon could not be made smaller. And as for the rest of the demands, they would appeal to Marienburg's vanity. The machine would take the shape of a boat, or, as it transpired at least, a caricature of a boat. After all, they liked boats, did they not? Once seized upon the by the desperate engineers, this plan, as crazed it might have been, took hold very rapidly. And in a remarkably short time, a prototype was assembled, hybridizing steam power boat building and some inspired innovations by Gutman. The entire product looked more like a grotesquely sized theatrical prop rather than a ship of war or a steam tank, and was a pretty shameful imitation of either, but somehow it worked. Well, mostly. Provost Marshal of the Imperial Gunners Rule claimed that the t team of engineers, the wonder of the age, upon announcing their success at the Countess Emmanuel von Lips and the Marienburg litigation, and even managed to keep a straight face while doing so. The engineers' relief at the acceptance of the design turned to something resembling panic, however, when the Marienburgs ordered not one or two, but a squadron of ten. And the functioning prototype proved less than easy to replicate and the project continued to fill coffins apiece. Three Marienburg class land battleships, to give them their official title, had been completed with a fourth on the way when the Nurglish Chaos Lord Termacan's horde darkened the Wizenland's horizon. The Merchant Lords of Marienburg had already made a secure their investment by moving a number of heavy barges and a sizable guard of veteran mercenaries and infamous Manan's Blade to escort the first part of the fleet to land ships back to Marienburg upon completion. Yet the Countess Emmanuel swiftly managed the use of these wonder weapons to defend the city, and the Marienburgs were happy to oblige for the right price. 
Something of a poor imitation of a true steam tank in terms of sophistication, the landship does at least have size and ambition in its favour. From its bulky armour and over-decorated hull to its oversized life-threatening boiler and steering mechanism that can only be described as the fruits of an unhinged mind, in battle the landship is an insane sight and almost a mobile fortress in effect. Towering over the battlefield, discharging its thunderous culverin, a type of light cannon, instead of the prow, installed in the prow of the landship after the inclusion of large ordnance proved disastrous, and crushing the enemy underfoot while its crews remain almost safe on the high deck above. That is when it worked, and the wheels don't fall off and the boiler explodes and the magazine catches fire. The deck crew, along with the complex operation of piloting the ship and avoiding imminent catastrophes such as it toppling over or the boiler exploding, do their best to battle in battle to let fly with a wide number of sweepers, deck pistols and handguns laid on and loaded for that purpose. Okay, so that is all the current lore that we have for the Empire Steam Tank. Three and a half of them were ever built. They were all pressed into service in Nuln to defend against the hordes of the Hermakan, who's the giant Nurgle guy riding the Toad Dragon. I have no idea if any of them made it out of that war, if any of them still exist, or if any of them made it to the end times. I am unsure. I think it's pretty staggering and cool lore. In short, merchants wanted to have these cool steam tanks in their arsenal. They weren't allowed to have them. They tried to design their own. It went disastrously wrong. They made it bigger and more ornate and more crazy. And of course, the, the lords of Marienburg accepted these glorious things. So I don't know if any of them ever made it back to the city-state of Marienburg. That would be interesting to know. So as I've been rambling on uh, about the lore of this impressive beast, I have, of course, been painting away. You may have noticed that I added some black trim to the hull of this vehicle itself, just to break up all the wood grain. I was waiting for more black Templar contrast to arrive before I could do that. And then you may have noticed that I also once again went back and dry brushed. I grabbed that ivory paint again and gave it like a re-dry brush after I'd applied the black. And I keep doing that after I do each stage of kind of extra detail. I just give it a really light dry brush of the ivory to pull all those tones back together. Now comes the tedious stage of painting shields. This thing actually has 12 shields on the thing. 12. I have to paint 12 unique beautiful shields. I knew this was going to be the slowest part of painting this monstrosity. 11 of them are highly detailed shields and one of them is held on the figurehead at the front. That is not going to be difficult to paint at all. So 11 of them are going to be done in the Sterling covers. You may have realized that I grabbed the um, Uniforms and Heraldry of the Empire book at one point. Um, that was because I was looking at some information about the Stir River Patrol and realizing that one of their standard symbols is the kind of blue fish. So lots of uh, fish on the shields of these models. So I thought it would be a really useful thing to add that in. So this thing does belong to my Stir River Patrol force, which I think makes a lot of sense. After I got the base coats on it and gave it a wash, I then went to the layering stage, basically going bright and vibrant. This is really where kind of a real spot of color should exist on a, on a tank like this. And obviously inside my Sterling army, which is just a sea of yellow and green, I do want this thing to blend in and look properly like part of that force. Now that we now know the lore, I have no idea where the uh, forces of uh, Sterling got their hands on one of these Bahamots. They certainly can't afford one, <laughs> so they may have half hinged it from an old battlefield, repaired it to the best of their abilities, or maybe the Marienburg people hired the uh, Stir River Patrol to defend their waterways and as a as a weapon of war they could use in that effect. They've given them a loan of a Marienburg Cross land ship. So you can see I brightened up the green, the yellow, and then I went in with the bone for all of the parchment and skull motifs and all those other bits and pieces across this thing. We really are getting close to uh, painting this thing. Now, this was, of course, you know, Thursday evening painting, Thursday day painting for a Friday video. So day three started on Thursday. It went on all day. Like I painted from nine in the morning till about six in the evening. I had dinner. I did a two hour stream between eight and 10. Uh, I painted the crew during that entire time. Didn't finish them. Finished the stream, finished painting the crew, glued them all to place. Did the great, like it was just a whole day. Like I probably could have done with a fourth day and half killed myself to get it done in the three days. But unfortunately, I needed the Friday to do some more work and get a video ready for Saturday. So it was a whole ordeal, but I think it definitely worked out for me. 
And I think I would have definitely gotten it done more comfortably if there wasn't so many beautiful shields on this thing. Going in with a very light blue uh, to uh, highlight those Stir River Patrol fish. I don't know what they're actually called. But things are definitely starting to come together. We're getting to that point in the process where I will get to paint, I will get to assemble, sorry, all the other component parts. I'll have to, I'll stop having to keep everything separate to paint it and I will get to see what this thing is gonna look like as a solid piece. And for that, I'm just so excited. Like I said, I don't even know how many years ago I got my hands on this piece. And I did start getting it going soon after, to be honest. And then unfortunately I got a little bit disheartened and I put it down for years. Here I am with all the shields fully painted and what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the dry brush with a bit of ivory and I'm dry brushing over the entire shields again. It's going to catch all the sharp details and just add a really nice highlight to it all and help it blend into the kind of frame of the landship as well. I think it looks great. Just helps pull all those colors together. And there we are, all 11 shields now painted on top of this ship. Definitely getting a real Sterling vibe from it now. Very happy with it. I will very much like to try and get this thing onto a tabletop and use it for Old World. Even if Games Workshop does not create any Legends rules for all their old fantasy miniatures, I'm still kind of hopeful they might. But if they don't, I'm not sure how easily the kind of 7th edition rules for this thing will port into the new Old World rules. I mean, the rules have changed drastically in some ways and not a lot in others. And I think this thing may actually kind of work in the Old World. And obviously I'll play a couple of casual games with my friends before I try and take it to an event or anything. And I don't mean an event that's like a tournament. I mean more of a game day or a fun play out day where, you know, people winning isn't the primary focus of the day. So I don't feel like anyone's getting screwed over. I would also be keen to just use it as a steam tank. Now, obviously it's on a much larger base than a steam tank, but I think that hurts me more than it would hurt my opponent, right? So I think it's okay to do. I'm basically handicapping myself by this thing being on this monstrously oversized base for a steam tank. Let me know if you think that's true or whether I'm, I'm missing some, some, some nuance of the game that might mean that I shouldn't do that. It's going to break the game, but I think using a steam tank will be fine. The steam tank has a cannon. It's a heavily armed thing. It can stomp and charge. The engineer at the top can fire its handgun or its repeater handgun at the top or hawk and long rifle or whatever. So I definitely think it could work. Here I am starting to glue those pieces in. So we obviously got our beautiful little uh, cannon, not a full sized or full strength cannon. Like I said in that description, they tried to fitting a normal Empire Grand Cannon to it with disastrous results. I don't think I would like to see the, um, the GoPro footage of that day in the office. I think it would have ended fairly poorly for the poor sod who, uh, who pulled that fuse. But here's me lining it up. Unfortunately, I didn't line up the camera perfect before I did it, but I'm basically trying to get the cannon looking directly on. I'm okay with the butt of it being a little bit off on the deck, as long as when it's pointing out the front, it is perfectly straight. So it just creates that beautiful silhouette of the, uh, of the thing. Next, I get to finally glue in the mast. Obviously, I line it up, clean it up, get it ready, add a, add a good amount of glue to this. You want this to be a fairly solid fix. I know in my stupid brain that at some point I'm going to pick it up by this mass and obviously if it breaks off and the whole thing falls to the ground, it'll be my own fault of course, but I don't want that to happen. So I give it a very secure connection, glue it on and this is actually like the, the final silhouette. Obviously I got to put on the crew and flags and stuff like that, but like these are all the main parts in place now and I'm getting really excited at the prospect of getting it finished. Now in my, I don't know what kind of mindset I was on when I first built this thing, I decided to have the anchor removable I added magnets to it and everything very excited until I realized that I hate magnets so I added a bit of glue and glued it in place and that's it it's final resting place is now there it won't move around or fall off or got lost or why I thought a removable anchor was a cool thing I, I don't know but it's not removable anymore so this particular bit of footage is being filmed at about 10 o'clock in the evening <laughs> because like I said it's after my stream and I still need to finish off all of the crew so uh, yeah, I did that. I continued painting away and getting the crew of these guys painted up. 
Now, I know that I said this thing will join my Stir River Patrol, and that makes the most sense. I understand the livery of the Stir River Patrol is, tends to be green and white. I'm just not a big fan of painting white. I may do a couple of units of Stir River Patrol in the proper colours at some stage. Maybe I'll change a couple of the shields over to have some white kind of filigree to play in with that. But at this late stage in the game, I, I'm sticking with the Sterling colours of green and yellow. I think it makes the most sense. Well, at least to me anyway. So like I said, I went through the motions of painting these guys up, taking my time, getting really nice detail with them. Obviously the crew are something that people will kind of hunch down and have a peek at and see what they look like. So I wanted to give them a little bit more effort, especially things like the guy in the crow's nest and the captain. So I, I gave them a little bit extra attention. Uh, I think it shows off. They look really well, I think. As you can see, I use a scalpel to remove them from the Frontier Wargaming painting handles. People always ask in the video when they see those handles where I got them from, even though it says it in the video and in the description of the video where to get them. Frontier Wargaming, awesome company. Um, did a video for them a little while ago and they sent me quite a lot of those painting handles. I think they sent me 40 of them. So uh, no complaints with that. I would, I would take 40 more of them if they wanted to send me them. They're so useful. Here I am after cleaning off all the feet of all the crew, gluing them into position, getting them in the right uh, kind of state, trying to decide where they all want to go. Obviously, Crow's Nest guy goes in Crow's Nest. Got some guys firing out of the crenulations at the front of this thing. We have another guy who's more kind of standing at ease, so I decided to glue him into the middle section. And of course, the helmsman is on the wheel, and the wheel and him get glued into place properly. And, um, wow, it's, it's nearly there, like... I'm really happy with how this is looking. The crew looks great. The machine looks great. The shields look great. The figurehead looks great. I just, I'm so proud of myself with this one. It was such a long effort. It's such... Obviously, it's something that I've been dreading for years. Not dreading. Like, I've been so excited to see the finish. But honestly, it's one of those things. I call myself mediocre hobbies for a reason. I don't consider myself to be a particularly good hobbyist. Like, I can, I can knock out a nice tabletop standard army. But something as special as this, like I will only ever get to paint one Marienburg landship in my life. So wanting it to have the kind of the best detail that I can pull off. And I think I managed to do that. I'm proud of this. I don't think I'll ever want to go back and repaint it. Added a million grass tufts to the base. Just add a bit of color and call the whole thing complete. I'm so proud to have this thing in my collection. I will definitely be playing a bunch of Empire games. Getting some extra units painted up for that army, of course. All my mercenary units need to get painted up and added to that force. I finally found the bit where the telescope is supposed to go, thanks to some very friendly people on Instagram who messaged me and told me where it's supposed to go. And then I took a bunch of images of this thing. I just kept taking picture after picture after picture because I love it so much. And obviously I will share as many of these pictures which I can. I'm sure I'll post a bunch of them on Instagram and stuff like that. I hope you guys enjoyed the, the three days of hobby. You got something out of that. And if you would like to see more of these kind of three day um, little mini series, please do let me know. If you want to see the Night Porphyrian done in a week or two on a three day series, just let me know. I'd be more than happy to do it for you guys. Well, guys, we did it. It took three days. It took a lot of hours, blood, sweat and tears. But my Empire landship, I was going to call it a Marienburg landship, but it's now strictly a Stirland landship. I believe it belongs with the Stir River Patrol anyway. It's finally complete. This is just such a cool miniature. It is one of the coolest, most interesting fantasy figures that Games Workshop has ever come out with. And I'm so, so happy to have it finished and in my collection. You guys noticed in the last video that I was struggling to find where the telescope goes on this thing and literally by the end of my stream last night where I was still working away on the crew of these things until late in the evening, I was basically saying to the people on stream that I was not gonna put this telescope on. I could not see where it's supposed to go. But thankfully the community has reached out and I just wanna mention three people specifically. So uh, Raf50, James D. Smith and Scorpion KHP all reached out to me on Instagram. I'd never talked to these these beautiful people before, but they all reached out to me with, with images and things of where that telescope is supposed to go. So I was able to actually glue it on this morning before I started doing the edits um, to the front of this thing. So uh, it won't be in the final lucky shot, but it will be in the photographs I take in a moment. So I am happy to have the telescope on the front 
and seeing it orientated correctly makes so much sense it was just my silly brain that couldn't figure it out so i really do thank those guys for taking the time out to uh, help me uh, and get that information across to me so from the bottom of my heart guys thank you so much hope you guys enjoyed this mini series i did want to try a mini series like this for quite a long time and i do plan on doing one for 40k really soon i have a knight porphyrian uh sitting in a box that i've never even opened that i think will be a beautiful thing to do across a three-day period and let me know if you enjoy this format um like i said it's one after the other after the other days so you get to see the entire project in a three-day span you don't have to wait weeks or months for the next video or anything like that so i enjoyed it. it helped me get a really intricate miniature off my backlog done and ready for some games so thank you guys so much for the support sticking around and watching all three videos and um, yeah thank you so much so if you did enjoy this video make sure you give it a like ask me any questions you want in the comments below and um, if you want to give the uh, channel a subscription that would be absolutely amazing as well i am running a special event where at the end of this year i want to give away a titan and the only way to be entered into that is to be subscribed so more details on that everywhere all right guys thank you so much for sticking around at the end i'll see you in the next one